Hello, welcome to the Voice Dialogue video series. Our purpose is to introduce you to the work of two PhDs in psychology, Dr. Hal Stone and Dr. Sidra Stone. They have devoted their lives to mapping and exploring the human psyche with particular emphasis on personality and relationships. From their decades of clinical research arose their voice dialogue system, which gives unprecedented ease of access to those structures in your psyche known as subpersonalities. In the series, you will discover exactly what voice dialogue is, how it works, and what are the intellectual concepts behind it. Hal and Sidra will also personally demonstrate the voice dialogue system. So to begin, let's use some visual metaphors for the psyche so you can understand exactly how this system works, which is also known as the psychology of selves. Let's take a surreal landscape as our first metaphor. Within this landscape is a large multifaceted diamond. The personality can be imagined to be like this diamond. It is one function with many sides or parts. Imagine that the facets of the diamond are made up of thousands of different sets of eyes. The eye on this facet would see the world in a particular way. The eye on the facet next to it would see the world in almost the same way with perhaps a 5% difference. The facet next to that one would see a 10% difference and so on. Each eye, that is, each aspect of the personality, would have a different view of the world. Each part of the personality is an individual structure in itself, just like the facets on the diamond. We all behave differently in different situations. For instance, the way you behave towards your parents is different to the way you behave towards your own children. The way you behave on the sporting field is different to the way you behave when making love. The way you behave when you're angry is different to the way you behave when you're sad. Each of these behaviors and characteristics is encapsulated into an individual structure called a sub-personality. Another way of looking at the personality from the point of view of voice dialogue is to examine a CD music player into which you can load more than one CD at a time. Each CD is pre-recorded with particular tracks of music. It can only play back what is recorded on it. It cannot play anything else. Whichever CD you choose, the player can only play that one. It cannot play any of the others until they are chosen. It is locked into only those tracks which are embedded on its surface. There is a huge variety of subpersonalities, perhaps hundreds, each independent in itself and driving your life's experiences. Each subpersonality behaves in the ways it has been programmed to behave, just like the music CD. Let's see now how your personality builds up and how you've become the person that you are, because you are far more than you ever imagined yourself to be. When you are born, you are totally vulnerable. You can do nothing for yourself. You can't wash yourself, feed yourself, dress yourself, nor walk, talk, or make yourself understood. You are totally dependent on your mother and those who care for you. We are all born into the world in this way. This is the first identity we have as a vulnerable child. As we grow, we experiment with certain behaviors. These are called the child series of subpersonalities. They involve a whole range of emotions and modes of expression, from fury to bliss, from love to terror, from joy to boredom, from manipulation to seduction. We try everything we can in our efforts to get what we want. It is a natural part of growing up. Some of these behaviors are kept and others are discarded or more accurately buried, sometimes deeply, into the subconscious mind. In the psyche live the various structures called subpersonalities. There are perhaps hundreds of these and each has a particular function. The word persona, the origin of the word personality, means mask, and we all have a variety of masks to wear that come forward to be used 
at different times in our lives. Some people believe that they are one single personality structure, but, as you will see, this is a misunderstanding. We are all made up of many subpersonalities, many selves. Each subpersonality is also a totally discrete structure in itself, like the CD or single computer program. It is loaded up by the inputs coming through the senses, being programmed as the person grows. Each one has its own memories, history, agendas, desires, feelings, physical components, ideas and needs. Here are some of the more familiar ones used by most people in today's developed society. One of the first to develop is often the pleaser, a part that pleases other people. It is a subpersonality which children use as it makes them feel very secure when they are appreciated and loved. Then along may come an inner critic, that voice you hear in your head telling you off and criticizing you and reminding you of things you have done in the past which have embarrassed you. This is often associated with the rule maker, the one which keeps the rules of your family, society, culture or religion. This is sometimes called the conscience. The rational mind or analyst also make an appearance. They may be followed by a clown, a part that is full of fun and the life and soul of a party. Perhaps a rebel appears in reaction to a person being suppressed by their outer circumstances. Then, particularly in today's high activity world, a pusher is born to keep the person on the go and achieve. In opposition to these doers is the being energy subpersonality, which is content and happy in the present and through which intimacy is often experienced. Our instinctual nature is usually buried deeply and can only make an appearance in our dream world. Others such as vanity, sadness, anger, fear, concern and more can live within us. So for instance, the rational mind subpersonality is not able to experience feelings of joy. It can analyze what they may be like, it can consider joy as a concept, but it can't feel joy. That's not its job. It does words and concepts, not feelings and emotions. As you will later see, this is often a primary reason why people do not understand each other and their relationships fall apart. Why is this? Why can't people fulfill their desires easily and quickly? It is always to do with which subpersonality is at the forefront of their psyche. At any point in time, you are only able to express one particular subpersonality. So, as circumstances demand, sometimes you use, say, the rational mind, sometimes the pleaser, sometimes anger, sometimes the clown, sometimes vanity appears, sometimes the pusher, and so on throughout each day and throughout your life. You can jump from one subpersonality to another very fast. This can give the impression that you are one single personality because it is very rare to have awareness of this natural but extremely fast process without special training. But not being aware of this process, not realizing you are actually a multifaceted series of subpersonality structures or expression potentials and behaviors, a lot of literally different selves, limits your life greatly and often causes your relationships, career, finances and health to be unfulfilling or even disastrous. But there is another option and that is to firstly understand your subpersonalities, yourselves, and secondly to practice voice dialogue. This is a fantastic system and, as you will see, it has a quite unique methodology when compared to other forms of accessing the psyche. If you master it, you will have extraordinary tools and insights which you can apply to just about every area of your life.